Hey guys, what's going on? It's Josh the Millennial Reefer here, and today I am on episode 3 of the Clownfish Harem build, and today I am going to be showing you how I built my sump. Well, I didn't really build the sump, the tank per se. Um, the tank was given to me by a, a good friend of mine, and I'm turning into my sump. So, the first thing you see me doing here is measuring out where I'm going to be putting each of my baffles. Um, I do find it important that you measure on both sides of the tank so when you're lining the baffles up they're as perpendicular as possible and I feel like the more time you take the better the end product's going to look. Now what I'm going to be showing you here is kind of like my layout for the sump um, and everything that I plan on doing for the baffles. I actually um, kind of copied a another YouTuber's plans, uh, CJ Aqu CJ's Aquarium. I think he's in hiatus right now, but shout out to CJ if you uh, ever watch this. Um, thanks for the sump idea. Um, but yeah, just a simple uh, baffle. I'm gonna have four sections. The main section is gonna be the overflow section. It's gonna overflow into where the skimmer is gonna be, then to a fuge, and then back into my return tank. So it's pretty easy. Um, after I get everything marked out I start taping everything um, one thing I learned from doing my first sump for my uh, 125 gallon tank was that you really want to take your time with uh, doing the sump because at the end of the day you want it to look good so I'm um, first going to do the three of the baffles that are actually touching um, the other two baffles will be floating baffles but you'll see that in a second and yeah I think it turned out pretty good um, I did end up getting my glass cut at a Westlake Ace Hardware store, so shout out to Westlake and Ace Hardware. I'm shouting out a lot of people right now, but yeah, um, this is what I ended up doing. So just when you have, when you tape the glass in, you'll see right there how I kind of like laid the tape over it. I realized about halfway that was a bad idea because after you put the silicone on it, you want to remove the tape as quick as possible, or else the silicone will set to the tape. So I ended up going with like a Y kind of layout so that when I do put the silicone on the tank um, and I pull off the tape I don't have an issue with the glass falling but yeah so right now I'm putting the silicone on I am just using your standard uh, silicone one that everyone uses uh, it's cheap I think it was like five dollars at Home Depot and I used it before I've had no other effects so I'm using it again but uh, for these tanks I had I had to purchase five separate uh, pieces of glass. I had a 12 inch one, a 7 inch, two eights, and a 9 inch pieces of glasses that were cut. And this is a 40 gallon tank, so I ended up going about, I think it was, I can't even remember the length of it, but I'll post it like right now, like whatever I use the length for my baffles. <laughs> Anyways, um, so yeah. Um, just so you know, when you are rubbing it with your finger to rub it in, uh, make sure you have a used towel handy because this stuff gets everywhere and you really don't want it ruining any shorts or any shirt. So I wouldn't wear anything you cared about while doing this, but it's a pretty simple process once you get the <laughs> baffles into the tank. And just be careful when you're also removing the silicone because you want it to look as best as possible. And yeah, so I don't really know any jokes. Oh, here's a joke for you. How do you make a tissue dance? You put a little boogie in it. <laughs> alright, alright, guys, alright. That's my best attempt at making a joke, but... Anyways, once the first set of baffles was dry, it took about 30 minutes, I went ahead and got ready for the second set of baffles. The second baffle is going to be a divider where my mechanical filtration is going to go, and the other baffle on the right side of the screen is going to be a uh, bubble stopper. I think that's the right word. I'm actually running a blank right now while I'm recording this, but I really only like to do this in one take, so we're just gonna call it a bubble stopper for now, and someone will correct me in the comments below. <laughs> but yeah, so then I um the first baffle on the left I wanted about two inches off the ground, and the baffle on the right I only wanted about an inch off the ground. So what I ended up doing was I uh, used some DVDs to prop it up. You'll see me in a second get the DVDs and use there, and then when I taped him. On again, I was make I did make sure that the baffles were in the right location. I felt like the other baffles were okay, but I feel like this baffle was the most important because it dictated how wide my mechanical filtration spot was going to be. 
man, I didn't realize, like, how much lag time I had right here. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, yeah, so there's me getting the DVDs. Um, I think I have Wonder Woman in there and uh, Devil Wars Prada, so always good movies to go check out. And there's my butt again. But, yeah, so I'm going to tape those on again. I don't think I ever have any footage. No, I do. I do. I lied. <laughs> I lied, but hold on. We're getting there. Come on, guys. Come on, Josh. Get out of the way. Go, go, go. I guess I could edit this, but hey. Alrighty, so now we got the other baffles on, and I am taping. Again, I use the Y method with this to try to eliminate error for when I'm removing the silicone. Oh, and when I when you do the floating baffles, one thing to note is you don't have to put tape on the bottom of the tank, so it makes it easier when you're removing the baffles, but when you're doing baffles on the bottom of the tank, just go around the whole perimeter of the tank you're going to be removing the baffles on. Alrighty, well now that that is drying, I'm going to show you how I made my little divider for my mechanical filtration. So, once again, I stole this from CJ's aquarium. I think he's in hiatus, like I said, but shout out CJ. But I made two of those little dividers, and I'm going to be making kind of like a pyramid, I don't know, a stacked, stacked, anyways. So I do get some PVC cutters, best invention ever, um, but I cut four, no, five pieces of PVC that I had laid in around, and they're all about four inches tall, and I'm going to be creating a baffle, and then after you get them all cut, the next thing you're going to want to do is drill some holes out for the, man, I am drawing a blank right now, I'm recording this, but you know what, I'm not going to redo it, so for the little zip ties that's the word zip ties there we go so yeah we got drilling some holes for the zip ties it'll make sense in just a second um one thing to note is the zip ties that you buy make sure it's smaller than the diameter of the drill bit you're using to drill the holes into the pvc pipe and then this part is pretty self-explanatory you feed it through the holes and through the a crate a crate i had laying around for my other tank too i bought it like a year ago, a $12 sheet, and I've been using it for many other projects, but this is going to be the bottom layer of the baffle, and then I'm going to add the second layer. Now, the top layer is going to be mainly for my mechanical filtration, so I can add, like, uh, filter floss. It's my favorite filter media. It's simple, it's cheap, and it's easy to remove in place. I absolutely hate filter socks. I think they're disgusting, and they just, I don't know, I don't like washing them or touching them. I just like throwing everything away, but yeah. So now you're getting a general idea of like what my little stack's going to look like. This is going to be in that second section after the initial overflow. And that's where everything's going to be. And here's the finished product. So you can see where I got the uh, stack. Um, you can see all my different layers. I have a 10 inch area for my skimmer. So it's going to be a 10 by 18 inch area. And yeah. I think this little DIY sump turned out pretty good. All in all, it only cost me less than $30 because I was given the $40 sum from a good friend of mine. Uh, shout out to the Bear Necessities. I'll leave his YouTube page in the bottom below. But, yeah. So I left 7 inches of room on the right for the return pump. I figured that was standard. But, any, anyways. Thank you guys so much for watching. Have a wonderful day. And remember to uh, keep on refin. Oh, thumbs up and video. Thumbs up like this video, guys. Helps me a lot. Thanks. Bye, guys.